Hello, I am Professor Marcos Massimo. I'm going to present the work Deep Reinforcement Learning for Humanoid Robot Dribbling. This work was the master thesis of Alexandre Musil. I am Marcos Massimo and Professor Takashi Oneyama also collaborated on this research. We are from Aeronautics Institute of Technology. Now beginning with an introduction. RoboCup 3D Soccer Simulation or Soccer 3D is a simulated robot soccer competition with teams of 11 agents. As you can see here on the right, we have this simulation of a soccer field with humanoid robots as agents. So the agent here is based on the now humanoid robot and the simulation uses a high fidelity physics agent which simulates a uh, rigid body dynamics precisely. Then if you want the robot here to make a basic action just has walking or kicking, you actually have to use control algorithms as you would need with real humanoid robots. And in this domain, machine learning techniques are very popular because since you have a simulation, you can run a lot of simulated experiments, get a lot of data, and then use this data in your machine learning algorithms. The objective of this research is to learn a high level driven behavior using deep reinforcement learning or DRL. And we use a hierarchical approach since learning to control the joint directly to make a dribble is very hard, we tried to make the learning agent command a model-based walking engine, which was previously, pre previously developed in our lab using control theory. Now, we are going to talk about some related works. So, modern deep reinforcement learning algorithms, such as EDPG, TRPO, and PPO, have shown remarkable performance for continuous control tasks. The Soccer 2D domain, which is another domain related to robot soccer, Stone used the DPG for the half field offense task. In the small size domain, some works have used DRL for high level behaviors, such as kicking, going to the ball, passing. In Soccer 3D, McAlpine and Stone applied CMAES, which is an evolutionary strategy algorithm to learn dribbling without opponents. To the best of our knowledge, no work has ever used DRL for high-level behavior in Soccer 3D. There are works, however, that use DRL to learn motions, just as walking, running, and high-performance kicks. But we don't know about works that use this kind of algorithms for high-level behaviors. We used a hierarchical approach, as I said before, where we had a high-level controller that commands a walking engine, a model-based walking engine at 10 Hz, and the walking engine computes joint speeds which are sent to the simulator at 50 Hz. The command to the walking engine is a desired velocity vector, so we have a four speed uh, in the local coordinate system of the robot, a sideways speed, and a turn speed. This makes this engine what we call an omnidirectional walking engine. Now, talking about the dribbling task, we define this yellow rectangle here, and this blue robot here is the learning agent, uh, which is learning to dribble the ball against this red opponent, and the red opponent uses the same strategy that Itandroid uses in competitions. And the idea is to have this blue agent to dribble the ball to the right edge of this yellow rectangle. If it does so, we declare it a success, and if the red agent dribbles the ball to the left edge of this rectangle, we declare a, fla a failure. Here we show how we model this task in a reinforcement learning framework. So about the state space, we use the torso's pose, the x, y, and z coordinates of the torso in the global coordinate system and also the yaw angle. The torso's velocity, here we are not talking about the commanded velocity, but the, a measured velocity of the torso. The relative x, y positions, or the ball position with respect to the agent. The opponent position in the agent coordinate system. The ball position in the opponent coordinate system. We also use some distance. The distance between the ball and the agent. The distance between the ball and the opponent. And the distance between the opponent and the agent. About the action in space, it's just the common to the omnidirectional walking engine. About the reward signal, so we have a lot of terms here because we could not make the agents learn without a lot of reward engineering. Some terms here were inspired by other works, 
but some term you just found out, found out uh, using a lot of try and error. So the first time here, it rewards the agent if it's getting closer to the ball. The second term rewards the agent if it's close to the ball. The third term punishes the agent if it gets closer to the opponents. Uh, the fourth term here uh, rewards the agent if the ball is moving in the intended dribble direction or to the right in the figure I presented in the last slide. And the third, the three last terms here, they are related to the ending of the episode. So if the episode, episode ends with the agent completing the dribble, we give a lot of rewards to the agent. If the opponent complete, complete the dribble, we give a lot of punishment to the agent. And if the agent fell, we give punishment to the agent. Even with the hierarchical approach, this task is hard for reinforcement learning. If we start with a random policy, uh, the agent has a very low probability of touching the ball and get a high reward. So we used a technique called curricular learning, where we start with very easy tasks and we make the tasks harder and harder and harder until we arrive at the task we actually care about. So we used two kinds of curricular learning. Uh, the first one is related to the distance between the agent and the ball and the distance between the opponent and the ball in the start of the episode. So at first, the agent starts very close to the ball and we increase this distance when, while the training progress. Uh, on the other hand, the opponent starts very distant from the ball and we decrease this distance while the training progress. About the opponent's skills, we start with a dummy agent that does not move, and after some time, we switch to an agent that uses the same strategy it androids uses in competition. About the training setting, we used a common notebook to train uh, this agent, so we do not have a lot of computing power. About the deep reinforcement learning software, we used OpenAI baselines, which has implementations of the algorithms that we used. It has implementations of the DPG, TRPO, and PPO. About the hyperparameters, we used the default hyperparameters from baselines, so we didn't try to tune any hyper hyperparameter. This plot shows the evolution of the reward during training. As you can see, PPO was the only algorithm to learn something from this task. TRPO and the DPG didn't learn anything at all. And this plot shows a very common reward curve where the, the agent clearly learning how to accomplish this task. And the vertical line here shows when the curriculum is used, when we switch from the dummy agent to the agents that it androids uses in competitions. This plot is very similar, but it shows the episode length during training. As you can see again, TRPO and the DPG didn't learn anything in this task, and the episode length is getting higher because the agent is learning not to fall down during the training. Regarding a final evaluation of the learning policy, we have the results here. So we have the learning agent and we have the baseline agent, which is the agent it androids use in competitions. Uh, as you can see, the success rate of the learning agent is a lot higher. It's 68.2%, which shows that the learning agent learned how to out outperform the baseline agent. And about the average duration of the dribble, the learning agent takes less time steps to execute the dribble. So the learning agent not only has a higher success rate, but it's out faster in dribbling the, than the baseline agent. But the conclusions, the agent learned a dribble, dribbling policy that outperformed our hand-coded agent. PPO was the only DRL algorithm to effectively learn. However, we have to mention that we did not try to tune a hyperparameter. Probably, if we tune a hyperparameter, the DPG and TRPO would learn something on this task because this task is hard, but not that hard. So we expected that TRPO and the DPG would learn something. For further research, we could use self play instead of a fixed opponent. And we believe, by other works, that if we use self play, we could achieve an even better policy uh, than the one we, we got in this work. Moreover, we intend to learn additional high-level behaviors with has goalkeeping. 
Muzio acknowledged CAPS for his scholarship. Takashi thanks CNPQ for his research productivity grant. The authors thank it and sponsors.